Data is messy. It's often unbalanced, mislabeled, and sprinkled with wacky values to throw off your analysis and machine learning training. The first step to getting your dataset cleaned up is understanding where it needs cleaning. Today, I've got just the tool for the job. Understanding your data is the first step to getting your dataset cleaned up for machine learning. But this can be tricky to do, especially in any sort of generalizable manner. An open source project from Google Research called Facets can help us visualize our data and slice it in all sorts of manners, which can help us begin to see how our dataset is laid out. By allowing us to find where our data doesn't quite look the way we're expecting, Facets helps reduce mishaps down the road. Let's see what Facets looks like. The team has a demo page on the web, so you can try out Facets from Chrome without installing anything. Moreover, Facets visualizations use Polymer web components backed by TypeScript code, so you can easily embed this in web pages and into Jupyter Notebooks. There are two parts to Facets, Facets Overview and Facets Deep Dive. Let's take a look at each one now in more detail. Facets Overview gives, well, an overview of your data set. In previous videos, we saw how tools like Pandas can help us get a sense of how our data set is distributed. We can get a slightly upgraded view of this type of information using the Facets Overview tool. Facets Overview splits the columns of our data into rows of salient information, showing stuff such as percentage missing, min and max values, as well as stats like mean, median, and standard deviation. It also has a column that shows the percentage of values that are zeros, which totally helps with catching cases where most of your values are zeros. You can also see these distributions on your test data set as well as your training set for each feature. This way, you can double check that the test set has a similar distribution to the training data set. Yes, indeed, technically this is best practice to do at least this level of analysis on your own anyway, but I have definitely forgotten to check all of these aspects of every column of my data. This tool will help ensure that you don't miss this crucial step, and it highlights some abnormalities. Now let's take a look at Facet's Deep Dive. This is where things get really interesting. It allows you to have even more clarity into your dataset and zoom all the way in to see an individual piece of data. You can facet the data by row and column across any of the features of your dataset. This will look familiar to views when you're shopping online for, say, shoes and filter by different categories such as size, brand, and color. Let's take a look at a concrete example of deep dive in action. The interface is divided up into four main sections. The main area in the center is a zoomable display of your data. On the left-hand panel is where you can change the arrangement of your data with various dropdowns to control things like faceting, positioning, and color. Directly below that is a legend for the center display. And on the far right is a detailed view of a specific row of data. You can click on any dot of data in the center visualization to see a detailed readout of that particular data point. Now, let's see how this all comes together. To do this, we'll use the Census dataset, a classic dataset extracted from the 1994 US Census by Barry Becker. Its target is to predict whether a household's annual income is above or below $50,000 based on various census statistics. We'll first split the data by age range and color the data points based on the target value. Here, blue means less than 50K and red means greater than 50K. Now we can look at the breakdown by age of another feature of the data. Uh, say, do different number of hours per week yield different results across age ranges? Let's find out by faceting columns by hours per week. We can see that there is a larger chunk of the age 17 to 26 population working 15 to 29 hours per week, which may just be the result of kids doing summer jobs, let's say. And we can also see the trend of fewer and fewer people working 29 to 43 hours per week as they get older, while the 43 to 57 hour segment stays relatively constant in the middle years of the chart. But this still doesn't quite show us what we are looking for. So let's try changing the positioning of the plot 
and getting a more detailed look. We'll switch the positioning to scatter and only facet by H. I'm also going to select hours per week as our vertical sort order to make it easy to see the working hours across different age groups. Now we can see that indeed the hours per week rise in the middle of the chart and lower on either side. You should continue exploring this data and see what trends and relationships you can find. For instance, you might facet by country of origin, which would show that the data is heavily skewed. And this might tell you that you need to collect more data points to have a more balanced data set. If this was interesting, you're probably wondering how to get your data set loaded into facets. Well, here you have two options. You can either use the web interface and just upload the data directly and play with it in the browser. Or you can install the library as a Jupyter Notebook extension using the instructions on the project's GitHub page, which I'll link below. Facets is a useful tool for peering into your data and seeing the relationships between different features, as well as ensuring that there aren't missing or unexpected values in your data set. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch future episodes right when they come out. Now go out there and facet your data and see how you can improve your machine learning.